Hey guys. Hello. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Guardians of Gaming. We are your hosts, Jude, Jude Gear, and I'm Vagabond. And here we're going to be playing the Wii menu. Hooray! Hooray. Also, this was a, a playthrough that we were trying to do for like how many years? Have we tried to do this like two years? A few years back, yeah. Yeah, and it got corrupted slash lost the files multiple times. Yeah. Oh, was, really? Yeah. Yeah. It was back then, though, but we're playing right now 1080p 60 fraps with a new Elgato that I managed to get a year ago, but it's all great, and it's been a while for Finney's and Fur for the series of playing across the second dimension, even though the series just ended back in 2015, we are going to relive it again. Yeah. Let's start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is... Yeah, our... like you said, it did end about 2015. Recently, it just got a Disney Plus movie called Kansas Against the Universe that just came out. Yeah. But it was only the main series that it ended. And since the movie was good, I haven't exactly watched it yet. I'm just saying it's good and all. Well, it's, pre it's pretty good. Um, I do like Second Dimension a little bit more because then again... I, I do like the whole parry plot line that they did in that movie quite well. Um, I, I say it's like second, uh, so it's still good. Yeah, those were the times. Yes, it's that, that movie's also on Disney Plus as well. Yeah, so, want to start a new game then? Yeah, let's start a new game. Oh yeah, let's just, you know... <laughs> load the game near the end of the end. Yes, and like, yes, it's the fun part only boom, special. Play through like, over. Yeah, find a boss. <laughs> Just play through every level backwards. Well, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. That so helps. yeah, this game comes with its own original song. I forget what the heck it's called, but it's only for this game. Yeah. It's just for the game anyway. Yeah. What, do they not have the uh, Bowling for Soup song? For this? No, no, that's on the soundtrack. Hmm. Ah. Bowling for Soup is the only, didn't only do this, this series. It all, they also did um, Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. Yeah. Really? Did, yeah. The, did they do the theme song or like another? No, they did the theme song. Now. Both the movie and the uh, TV series. Yeah, they did do that. Hmm. And they also did um, Simon Leash's um, Endless Possibilities. I think that was just the singer, right? Yeah, yeah, that's mostly the singer. A lot of things that we didn't even suspect. Yeah, it's all connected. Everything's connected. All the more reason to have a connection. Yeah. All right, so... Justin, how did you get into Phineas and Ferb? What, what did you start it at? I started around episode one where I was interested in the series. I kept doing it. I really loved it afterwards when it was pretty much back airing around at Disney Channel. And that's what got me interested into it. I haven't got the figures or even got the plushies. I was a kid back then. At least that's what I think. Okay. Okay, um, Josh, you ever dab into Phineas and Ferb at one point, or at least heard of it? Oh, yeah, I've heard about it. Uh, I watched, like, 16 episodes of it. I uh, thought it got old kind of fast. I, I Originally, I thought it was kind of interesting. I liked a few of the episodes, but overall, I thought it was, you know, meh. Well, I, I remember I can... it. I, yeah. I remember everyone loving this show, like, so much. Yeah. Everyone did love to the series back when it was airing. And it did lift up to its title. Yeah. Um, I got into it from ABC, like, years ago. I think it was, like, ABC 2008. They showed the um, Garden Gnome Beach episode. And, like, yeah, it's been pretty good. I, I do collect some Phineas and Ferb stuff before. I had the Perry the Platypus t-shirt that I got back in, like, high school. school. Um, I got a, like, 
a Perry the Platypus plush as like a gift. So yeah, other than that, um, I did follow the series all the way through. I did get tired of it later after season three was finished and after the movie. But yeah, I, I still think it's a good show. I, I did went back to watch some episodes before watching the Disney XD, not, not XD, Disney Plus movie, Canvas Against the Universe before that. Um, it still holds up pretty well. Yeah. After seeing this game and most of the clips on YouTube of Benisa Verb, I feel like I want to get back onto that since it's been a while. Like, I, I think you can go watch a couple episodes. You don't have to watch them all in order, that's for sure. Yeah, I know that, but I kind of feel like I want to watch things in order and enjoy it. Well, they're all on Disney Plus. That's all I can say. Uh, we're not really sponsored. Yeah, I know. I know. Unless you want to watch all of them at once. By the way, aren't you a little bit old to be watching Disney Plus? Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah, I think... They do have, like, older stuff on there. They have, like, The Mandalorian, which is really good. I just started episode one the other day. I heard there's a second season. Yeah, that's coming out next month. Uh Uh-huh. Boy, this is a lot of stuff just to get for fun. Yep. And using one of these... So, yeah, you're starting off with a baseball launcher. Um, The best thing I can describe this game is... The kids' version of Ratchet and Clank, where you have to collect a bunch of materials, make you get a different selection of weapons and whatnot. You can switch for them anytime you want. I thought the kids' version of Ratchet and Clank was Ratchet and Clank. No, Ratchet and Clank is more like like team for team stuff. You know, it's all about fighting against comic, like uh, the corporations and the and the big money man suits and all that stuff and yeah yeah yeah, you know what i talked about whatever oh yes speaking of that um they're they're supposed to be getting another game for patient five soon so when the PlayStation five drops yeah we also heard information that the playstation 5 is going to get an official release date as well as the price on september 16th yeah i i heard from a friend that they're going to have the Want to have the pre-orders ready for September twenty-second? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I heard. I don't know if it's confirmed or not. Precisely, but yeah. we are going to be looking forward to the games coming out and including how many games that might come in total, since we've already got enough PlayStation Four games. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, here's a fun fact. Did you know, guys? Kn- know that there was supposed to be a theater medical movie of Phineas and Ferb. It was going to be called Phineas and Ferb, just movie for theaters. And it was going to take place in the real world with Phineas and Ferb still being 2D animated, like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. But it was completely in production hell and canceled. Ah, uh, hmm. so that's why. But, yeah, it was set to release back in 2012, actually, or at least 2013. A few years after that, then. Yeah. Ah, time can fly by quickly, and reasons of why productions had to be stopped. Yeah, um, it was going to be by the same team that did the Muppets movie back in 2011, as well as, um, I think the director for that made um, Little Sun's. My Little Sunshine. I never saw that movie, but I heard about it when it first came out. Ah. Guess that's got to be interesting. Uh, like, I, I'm just interested in this with movies that never were released or, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. Been. Mm. But it was rather interesting just to be able to hear all that. Yeah. Also, um, the series creators, Dan Promeyer and Swampy Marsh, um, they both started off from Rocco's Modern Life, a Nickelodeon show, where, like, a lot of many um, creators started from that show. Um, Steven Hilberg from SpongeBob started it from there, and so, so on and so forth. I, yeah, I think oh, the Loud House creator, the original, before he got, like, fired and whatnot, worked on 
Morocco's modern life too. Yeah. Indeed. Is there anything else you want to tell us? Um, yes. Um, Mr. Lawrence um, started his um, acting career in Morocco's modern life. He was, um, I forget, was he a storyboard artist? I mean, he worked something in production. Um, when they were trying to cast roles, he he, he actually um, snuck in his um, audition tape, tape to voice um, Will like, what's what's the turtle's name? I forget his name. Dang it! Uh, which color bandana did he have? Uh, he didn't have a no, no. He's, he's not a ninja oh, turtle. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about Ninja Turtles for a moment. No, I'm talking about Rocco's Modern Life. Rocco's Modern Life, huh? Yeah. Oh shoot! I know who you're talking. I know exactly who you're talking about, but I don't remember his name. Yeah. Dang it. He's friends with that. He's friends with a cow heifer, right? Yeah, he's friends with heifer and Rocco. Oh, I don't remember his name. Uh. Oh, boy. You know what? Screw it. I'm looking it up. Okay, look it up. Yeah, you do that. All right, so you have Filbert. Uh, Filbert, who's voiced by Mr. Lawrence. You're right. Yeah. He snuck his audition tape into um, the up uh, for voicing him, and they liked it so much, so they kept him on board. It must have been kind of awkward listening to it the first time, though. Like, someone's you didn't even intend to be auditioning for the role. Yeah. And he has snuck his tape in there. I don't think... Is that even allowed in most I, cases? I don't know, but you got to remember, this was the 90s, and even back then, um, even, like, Joe Murray, the, the creator, said, like, they didn't even know what the heck they were doing while making the show. They just... You just pretty much winged did the whole time and did what they wanted to do. Oh, it's okay. like so, how Rocco got away from so much um, stuff back in the day. That makes sense. Guess it does anyway. But it's rather interesting to hear it, how that happened and all that. Yes. Um. I I know that there. I know he curses a lot, especially during conventions, and I know um. Not many people know about this. Um, Tom Kenny curses a lot, and there's a thing that Nickelodeon just wants to bury about him, like cursing in his SpongeBob voice, which is very hilarious. What is he act? Uh, does he actually do that? Yeah, yeah, he actually did that at one point. I, I don't know if I could find a video anywhere of it anymore, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I think find someone it. put some of those clips. Or at least the audio of him doing that and put it into like a sa the episode Sailor Mal on YouTube somewhere. No question. Um, I'm not sure if you know this, but for the episode Sailor Mouth, yeah. do you know if he act wait, did do you know if he actually like swore I, under I'm not those really like sure. dolphin noises? I'm or not was really it like sure. some some sort of gibberish? Like I I bet you they did for a, on that for just to like get into character I guess I guess um, even in the DVD commentary for that episode they don't really discuss if they cursed or not because you know Nickelodeon's watching their every move they don't want a parent to go on their case about that stuff so, but yeah like I wouldn't be surprised if they did curse for real so they. <laughs> Let me get that one uh, out there. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense now. Really, it does indeed. Can you play something here? Here. And every time you play the Phoenix of Birth game, you'll be able to hear the sound effects on the Wii Remote. Yes. Um, there is also a sound effect where you can get Harry's um, uh, chatter sound. But you don't get that too near the very end of the game, though. Yeah, the Perry the Platypus sound. Yes, um, Perry the Platypus played by D. Bradley Baker, um, who is well known for doing a lot of animal voices. He is um number four from Kona Kissing Store. He's a he's a lot of things. He's, he's got a very long biography. Biography, huh? He's got he's got a lot of VA roles. 
Mm. He does have a lot of roles, and he's very good at that. Uh, let, let me look up Phineas's voice actor, because I know he was in Everybody Hates Chris, that live action show. I'm trying to get my phone. And there's Candace. Okay, uh, Candace played by um, Ashley Tuesdale, well known for High School Musical, which I never really cared for. Yeah, that was pretty much back in the old days. Yeah, back like, this was like 20, 2007. Because I remember there was a, they showed off the preview for this show after like the second one, I think. Uh, it's been forever. Let me check the cast list. Man, High School Musical was such a big thing back in the day. I know. It was, it's weird. I wouldn't yeah. say it's weird. It's just, it's, um, you know, it was apparently very, very big, very marketable, very iconic in the mid to late 2000s, uh, iconography. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot. There are quite a few parodies of it too. Yeah. Um, I heard Disney is still selling some like merch and stuff. They just recently released like High School Musical shorts. I I, I wouldn't believe believe it because someone sent it to me on like in my messages recently. Just like, released. Yes, they just released High School Musical shorts. You can actually wear. Oh boy, so many things have happened over the years. Yes. All right. All right. Phineas is voiced by Vincent Vincent Mattella. Vincent Mattella. The Martala. Sorry if I'm not saying right. All I know is he was from Everybody Hates Chris, and my parents loved that show. This is about um Chris Rock and his younger years. Wow. He must have been doing a lot of stuff then. Well, he was well known for that. Boy, things can change up quickly when you don't expect it to. Yeah. Look at it. Look at the rest of D. Bradley Baker's roles over the years. To get up oh my god, the, the guy next door playing his dang music so loud. Bring it full of headphones, you hit me. Nah, don't worry about what he says or anything. No. Yeah. No, I just like, he has a stereo out instead of putting on the headphones when he's working outside. Hey, you're not the only one. I keep hearing rattling sounds from my room or something. Ah, uh, uh, I mean, oh, it's a gelatin monster. And he just showed him out of nowhere. Oh, yeah, major monogram or monobrow. Monobrow might work. That's a joke. Um, played by Swamp, Swampy Marsh, the co creator. I'm guessing that's Agent T? Yes. Um, there, there was an episode I watched that there was a Agent T was a completely different turtle. He was like a sea turtle or something. I, th I think they have multiple agent T's. Oh, yeah. Because, um, wasn't there an episode where they applied that one, one of the chicken ones died or something? Or the turkey oh, one? Oh, yeah. Died, uh, I remember, yeah. Yeah, when, um, Major Monogram was like, he, he was singing a song during a power outage and it was like, and the dog goes, and the cat goes, and the turkey goes. And then his intern, Carl, uh, points out, we lost Agent T during Thanksgiving, as a as a bit of a joke. Oh, but, uh, implied that he's a uh, was he was a Thanksgiving dinner. Well, there, there you go. Animal agents are not safe in the face of the universe. Nope, they're not. So there you go. There is stakes in that show. Your your animals might become your Thanksgiving dinner. Wait, so my dog and my cat are going to become my Thanksgiving dinner? No. Oh, no! Other countries do eat cats and dogs. 
Why yeah, do yeah they... but for Thanksgiving dinner? Well, they don't I know. Mean, what... Granted, granted, like America is like the only only country. The United States is the only country that that celebrates Thanksgiving. But but still, they might the eat point it on, is, on Thanksgiving Day. They don't even know about it. We've secretly been eating unicorn this whole time. No wonder they went extinct. Wait, how do they keep getting the unicorn meat for our Thanksgiving turkeys? Well, they take out the horn out and then say, oh, you're eating horse for dinner. But then they... Yeah, but if they're extinct, then uh, then how are, they, how are they getting more horse meat? Or, uh, or <laughs> unicorn meat? <laughs> it's, a, it's a secret conspiracy. Oh, yeah, they're just secretly getting all our Thanksgiving, uh, our Thanksgiving turkeys from the glue factory. Yes. And flaming their turkeys. You thought you were eating turkey, but you're eating unicorns, you fools. <laughs> Great. Now I gotta put both switches at the same time and be able to take it down. Yeah, this is where two player would come into play. Play, but you can still get for this game single player. Just gotta keep switching out characters. Yeah. But this seems easy enough. Yeah, this that game's not that hard. It's for kids. It's for kids. Yeah. Okay. So eat the ge gelatin to survive. Now, I'm surprised that this dimension didn't even think about eating sentient gelatin to survive. Yeah. Kind of like that, in a way. Yeah. Nice thing to get the hang of this game, anyway. And it's been a while, but anyway, this guy is almost done. Just gonna eat all his little remains. You know, for the kids! And he regenerates every time. Yeah. Like, I think this is one of the few Disney games I remember playing back then. Uh, I think th another one I used to play was um, Nightmare Before Christmas, Oogie's Revenge, and that was all, all right. But I hate the song bosses, though. Yeah. Well, whether we like or dislike, we have to enjoy it just for entertainment. Yeah. Um, it, it played like Devil May Cry, but with Nightmare Before Christmas characters. Guess that's finished up for a hard day's work. Yep, that's right. Ah, oh, the deepest lore of this turtle. Yeah, that's what would have seen it coming. Mm. And again, this is taking a like it to the turtle. Well, the turtles are awesome. Calabunga, dudes. TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. Yes, indeed. I to think of it. There has been a talk by Rise of the TMNT. What are your thoughts on that? Um, Rise is okay. I, It's not my favorite Ninja Turtles. Um, I will say the animation for it's fantastic. It's just not my favorite Ninja Turtles series. It still goes to, like, 2012s. Yeah. Um, I heard Rise is supposed to be getting a TV sh TV movie on Netflix in the future, but I don't know if that's legit or not. Because from what I heard, it got pretty canned by Nick. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is a character select screen where we can switch any character we want. But just remember, every level requires a particular character to, to unlock certain items. So just let you know. We are going to continue on to this anyway, so after the mission is over, we'll call this apart. Yeah. Sounds good. After all, we did start with Phineas and Ferb, and we're going to be enjoying this as much as we need to. Yes. 
Oh, yeah. Indeed, hopefully we can get this playthrough done and won't have any problems or get corrupted or the Martians take over and corrupt the file again. Yes. Additionally, just to ask, though, does this game have autosave? Yes, I think so. Double check on that. You too. guys played this five years ago and you're unsure if the game has audio. Yeah, I haven't touched it in five years, okay? Same here, and it cannot be helped. And plus, we just wanted to be sure to see if it does have auto save or not. If it didn't, that'd be a problem. Uh, let me see. Still looking anyway. Open it up. This is getting rather interesting by the minute. I'm trying to look this up. I'm sorry we're not making any commentary at the moment. I'm trying to look for this dang thing. Things auto save. Wait, I think I have the instruction manual still in the dang box, so you should find it out there. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I'm going to look at it anyway and get the save on it. it all right, probably going to start all over again. Let me look this up. And it says here. I sure do enjoy yeah, the game auto save progress. Yeah. It is. Okay. Yep. We're still getting close to the level. We're basically on third stage. And now we just need to get out of five more stages, and that'll be it. Yeah. I think at the end of this playroom, we can show up our. Fully complete save file. Yeah, that's I, fine. Yeah, I think I think I had I think some of the trophies we unlocked are on there. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. uh, so many norms. Oh man, feels like I'm looking at a norm nightmare. Uh. I think the best thing I seen from Norm as a character in the show was just like <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. He just pretty much calls out Dark Doctor D and his stupid evil schemes. And he was like, and he just stops in complete silence and just like, wow, that's that's pretty harsh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta feel sorry for the man at this point. The dude has so like the doctor has so many tragic backstory. I think they have he has more tragic backstories in my high school career. Oh, self deprecating humor. Cue the laugh track. Uh, hey, does anyone even use laugh tracks anymore? I, I think they still do, like on older older sitcoms, but uh who the heck cares? So now we got here. We got these and fervor points, and we can use them to play some of these machines to get certain prizes, like trophies, little mini figures, really. Yeah. As long as we just get him, and ah. Uh, I was just good at one crane game, and then I ended up you losing. You must, don't worry. You must become. The claw. Well, here's this. Parry ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's one thing I could get good at. You gotta get the timing right. So just play a regular skate ball. Or, in this case, um, Wii Sports Bowling. Aha! I got a thousand points! Alright! 
Don't stay. Stay. Oh. We got hundreds. Now, one more shine and now be it. And can I get this one last shot, folks? Let's see if we got this. Well, you got six balls left. Go for it. Yeah. Little. Oh. Left or right? All right. Here we go. Go. Again. Mm hey, -hmm. there we go. Another thousand. And there. Got a hundred. All right, let's see if you can get in that middle. Too far. Ew. Well, right. you did good. Oh, you got one more ball. Mm. Wait for the timing. No! Be the ball. 44 well, tickets. Well, you, well, you were the ball. You went in the hole. Yeah. So how do you exit out of this thing anyway? Oh, you just go this way. You got the arrow button. Well, we'll see you guys next time when we continue pace it for across second dimension. See you guys next time. All right, then. Bye. Bye.